What's up guys, Derek Daly here using the map editor in Far Cry 5 arcade mode. And today we're gonna do some more advanced uh, things on terrain editing and stuff like that. We've made a little progress on the island since part one. If you missed the first part of this tutorial series, a link will be in the description below. You can check that out. Now in the last video, this was all pretty much just pure white. And since then I've added a few things. I wanna show you how I've been painting textures on here and some tricks to do with that and some of the other things and considerations I have behind this. Also, how to more finely tune your terrain to the way you want it. All right, so here we go. First off, okay, again, yeah, it was, it, it was pure white. Now, as you can see, I've added some grass textures. Now, when you zoom way out, the, the textures look kind of bad in some places, especially on this cliff side. And we might want to do something about this cliff side. Look at that bad tiling on the cliff side. We're going to deal with that. I'm going to show you how I did the cliffs and everything like that. Now, in the last video, I showed you how I was smoothing the terrain. And I was using the smooth tool. One reason I was doing that is because, remember, keep in mind, always keep in mind the kind of terrain you're doing. Right here, we're doing a snow-covered terrain. So smoothing it out really helps make it look like it's like snow drifty, you know what I mean? It goes good with the snow. Now, you wouldn't necessarily always want it this smooth, but anyway, we, we went over that in the last tutorial. Now, one thing I've gone ahead and done is I've added a car. I did add a spawn point just for the sake of it, and I added a car. The reason I added a car is so we can kind of check this out. Let's do that real quick. We can just hold R3, again on PlayStation, and then press up, and that will allow us to explore the map. All right, so here we are in the map. So I got this car here, and this is always a good idea. This is I, this is definitely something I recommend when you're editing a map, is put some kind of vehicle so that you can traverse it and explore it, make sure the terrain works, you know, and, and things like that. And it does, you know, so. So having this car here is actually pretty damn handy. Now, as far as this map goes, let's see here. So I've added a lot of terrain. Now up here, I've decided, okay, so I've changed the terrain a lot. I've decided up here, this is where the base is gonna be. This is an outpost map. This is a map where the goal is to take the outpost. And I decided the outpost is gonna be up here on these cliffs. And uh, the player is gonna start over here. All right, so let's have a look at some of the more advanced terrain editing features. That's what we're here to do. First of all, let's start from this corner over here. Let's push L1 to pull up our toolbox, and let's have a look at some of the brushes you can use to add grass and things like that, because that's the first thing, working from this side over, that's one of the first things I did. So let's go to the terrain, paint texture, and here you can see all the different textures I've used. Now notice there's four boxes here, and there's no more empty slots. So from what I can tell, in paint texture, you're allowed to use a total of four textures across the entirety of your map. Here we have all four used. Here we have snow one, that's the texture I used and you saw that in the first video to paint the entire thing. So everything has a base of snow one. Now I have two different grass textures. I have grass um, snow two here in the corner, which is a little uh, thicker. And then I have it faded out to grass snow three. And I'll show you how I kind of feathered this out. Whoops, that was an accident. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Now let's back up here. Um, you know what, one thing I wanna show you guys right now, let's go ahead and get started with it, with the tips and tricks and, and controls. See how over there on the side of my screen it says press square to lock camera? That's something I found, let's push that now. That's something I found is very helpful to editing. It lets you move around. Basically it locks the camera at your current altitude and lets you move it around. So that's one less axis that your sticks are controlling. It, yeah, it lets you edit much, much better. So remember that, definitely remember that is a must, is lock camera. When you're editing, when I was doing this, I was definitely locking my camera so that I can move easier. Let's go ahead and unlock it so we can move freely again. All right, so let's go to, uh, let's do some stuff here. Here, I'll show you what I did. So grass snow too, this is a little thicker. Let's go ahead and put some down here. And you see we can put it down. Now I was painting this over in the corner of the map and then I went to this right here, Grass Snow 3, which is a little more sparse and this is what I was kind of painting, or is it not more sparse? Well, either way, I used one to blend to the other and uh, I, th I think I did a decent job of it. Now, that said, now of course we can go ahead and we can just undo this or we can just leave it, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and undo all that crap. There we go, that's all, that's all gone. No worries though. 
And okay, so then we have uh, our fourth texture I've been using is gravel snow. That's what I was using. I, I put that on the tops of some of these hills to kind of, um, I wanted some dimension and shading to this. And that's where the base is going to be built on. You can overlap these. Just I want to let you know you can overlap textures. And that's one thing I've done. Like here, you can see here we have snow, which blends into the uh, gravel, and it has grass over it. I've been trying to do that in some places. Now, this may still look a little barren and a little uh, a little bit like cottage cheese. It still kind of does. Don't forget, guys, we still have vegetation to add, uh, like trees and, and, you know, actually things like that. And so there's a lot more to go. I'd say we got a pretty good darn start. As long as we're talking about painting, let's go ahead and talk about um brush settings such as um we we talked about sp uh, speed and radius in the last video and this time we're going to talk about hardness hardness is something i want to talk about so we got our we got our brush here where we can paint see i can hold r2 and i can paint gravel what we didn't talk about and and oh, i'm sorry we did talk about brush size what we didn't talk about was brush hardness let's go ahead and make the brush a little bigger now let's go ahead and let's make the hardness. You see when I move the hardness up and down, it moves that circle up and down. Let's move the hardness up really high. And if we just click R2, yeah, it places a big thing of it. Now let's move the hardness way down. Let's move the hardness down to like nothing. It's just like using a paintbrush and a, an image editor. Let's go ahead and now you can see it's going to make it kind of more soft when we tap r2 we can just kind of get like if i come over here and if i just tap it here see we can just get oh it's so slight it's so slight we can just kind of very lightly just kind of airbrush it on that's what the hardness is going to do and i think that's a good way to put it turning your hardness down is almost like an airbrush but it does have to do with the size of your brush as well. My, you know, my area, my radius is really big right now. If I move my radius, whoops, if I move my radius down, now I can get very slight, small, I can just kind of shade. See, look at this. I can just kind of shade with it. So tweaking the size of the, the radius of the brush and your hardness can give you some really cool brush effects. As you can see here, I have like gradients where it just kind of, smooths out into the snow. I have places where it's very light because I don't want a hard line. You know what I mean? All right, let's go ahead and let's leave all this crap for now. Um, I won't be saving this. I'm not going to say this will probably reload uh, before the end of the video. Let's talk about some of the terrain stuff. And now that I've showed you some of the painting, let's have a look at some terrain stuff. All right, so let's go to the terrain and terrain tools. Now, Last video I showed you, I, I did some noise and then I smoothed it out with the smooth tool. And that's how I started this terrain. But there's a lot of other tools to use and a lot of other ways to use them to get this cool, like the, I have this cool like, plateau back here. So let's make, uh, here, let's make another similar structure over here. And again, we're not going to save this. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'll show you some of these tricks we can do here. We can go to terrain tools. And yeah, uh, let's raise some land up. Let's make another plateau. How about that? So we're going to go to raise and lower. We're going to click that. Now, pressing R2 raises stuff, as you can see. See, I can kind of go here and raise stuff. I have the same controls as other places. I can hold R1 and I can ch um, change the radius of the brush, make it bigger, more coarse, less fine, make it bigger. And we can get some stuff risen up here. All right. Now, what else can we do? Well, now we have a bit of a... Can I, we kind of have this stuff up here. Now, I did show you the smooth tool. The smooth tool is really good, but it's not the only tool that does that particular function. Smooth is going to smooth out the bumps. Let's go back to it here. Because I talked about that in the last video. Here's smooth. Now, let's, let's make the radius of it a little bigger. It's going to smooth out some of these angles. As you can see, the brush is circular shaped. Of course, you can change the shape of the brush to a square if you want, but I'm using a circle shaped brush and you can see, let's zoom in here, you can see the circular lines, the imprints of the brush. Now, the best real use for smooth is to get rid of those. See, we can kind of get rid of those and kind of smooth it out. 
But what about things like over here where it's like super spiky? What if we want to smooth this out just a little bit? The smooth tool isn't really going to do much for us here. I can hold it and what it's going to do, it's going to make it more round, but it's not going to flatten it like I have over here. To flatten, we're going to go back and we're going to use a tool called, you guessed it, flatten. Flatten works the exact same way. Um, notice we have radius and speed, which we can control via shortcut with the R1 button when I hold it. It lets me control radius and speed just like the other brushes. Also, it has a hardness. Now, there's also distortion, and I haven't gotten to distortion yet. We'll hit that in a future video. But uh, it also has a hardness. We're just going to leave the hardness at 30 for right now. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, let's do play with hardness. All right, so flatten is what we're going to use. It's a more broad version of the smooth tool. Let's use it here. And you see it's going to do this. It's going to create like plateaus. All right. So this is going to kind of let's you know what let's do. Let's do this. Let's create let's increase it. There we go. All right. We can use this to create cool little plateaus. Now we can go let's go grab let's do let's grab the smooth tool. And let's smooth this out, get it nice and smooth so we can't see the circle imprints from the brush anymore. There we go. So we got us kind of a cool little plateau here. So using these tools is a really good, really, really good thing. Now let's go ahead and let's check out some of these other features here. Let's go back to flatten. Let's try experimenting with hardness. Let's turn hardness up really high and use it. So this is going to, this should create a pretty, yeah, yeah, solid syndrilical uh, outcropping there. Yeah. Now let's turn our hardness back down. Let's turn our hardness down to like practically nothing. And let's let's stamp it here. And you see it's much it's much, much softer. You can see the contrast. You can see the difference. So that's what hardness is going to do for your flatten tool. It's going to be the same for smooth and pretty much everything else. The larger that yellow circle is within the brush, the less the less uh, gradients you're going to have between it and the outer boundaries of the brush. That's, I think that's a good way to put it. When it's really tiny, it's just going to flatten this small little portion and the rest of it, it's all gradient. When it's super high, it's going to pretty much give you a cylinder like that. So that's the best way to um, describe hardness. Now, what else do we want to look at here? We've covered flatten, raise lower. Uh, again, we have the same tools we have everywhere else and raise lower. We've used smooth. We haven't used ramp. We'll hit that in a future video. We haven't used erosion yet. So these two are going to be in a future video. What I wanted to show you guys today was pretty much what I've been doing here. So I've showed you how I painted some of the textures and, and such on this to get the terrain more realistic looking. I made the terrain, again, really smooth to give it that drifted kind of snow look. And though, yeah, it, it is still very plain. Don't forget, we have buildings to add, of course. But before that, we're going to be adding vegetation and things like that. And the map is going to come to look really, really organic. It really should. In fact, look at this little section we just made here in this tutorial. It actually looks pretty good. I don't intend on keeping this. I'm not going to. I'm going to reload the map. We're not going to save this map. I'm going to go ahead and reload where I had it before. I'm going to work on it some more and then show you guys our progress. The stuff I've been doing here is just testing. However, what I want to say is just testing and just messing around. We've made some really good organic looking foothills and mountains here, and it's pretty cool stuff. All right, guys, don't forget. Tell me uh, if there's any particular thing you want to see or you want explained or you're not sure how to do in the editor. Let me know. I'll figure it out and I'll have it in an upcoming video. For now, thank you so much for watching. This is uh, part two, slightly more advanced techniques of terrain editing, getting your stuff smoothed out, getting it more organic and natural looking. Guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the tutorial for the map editor in Far Cry 5. I'm Dark Daly. You guys take care.